If you ask any indie game developer, they can likely tell you about a time that they were ready to give up on a project, or maybe they did give up. I've been there my fair share of times, so I took the time to think about what it is that made me feel like giving up and what I can do about it. First, I want to clarify that sometimes it's okay or even a good choice to give up on a game. It could be too expensive, either in price or time, or it could be that it's just not worth the investment. But before you abandon another unfinished game, you should take the time to determine whether it's the right choice, or if you're just giving up. Even though I took the time to analyze this for myself, I'm only assuming that some of you face the same problems, so you should definitely take the time to think about it yourself. Introspection is a really powerful skill, and it'll really help you stick with your projects. So why is it that so many people abandon their games? Is it really just that game development is just so difficult, or is there something else to it? Well, game development is difficult, but I have a hard time saying that any project is too difficult. I think it's more accurate to say that a project is too big, and it's entirely possible that the game you're working on is too big for you to make. But if a game's too difficult for you to make, then I think you need to change your approach. A bit later, we'll talk more about thinking like a programmer, which can help make bigger games seem a lot less daunting. But there are times that it's a better choice to just get help from somebody else or to use pre-made assets. Now, you may disagree with me when I say that no game is more difficult to make than any other. But I say that because to make any game, there's certain things you'll have to do no matter what the game is. You always have to make art, you're always going to have to program systems, and you always have to build a UI. And each of those things may be difficult in its own, but they aren't any more difficult in game A than they would be in game B. The difference is that in a bigger game, you have to do more of each of those things. And it's that increased workload and added complexity that makes it seem difficult. That's why indie developers always say to start small. Take your game idea and cut it down to a fraction of the size. By doing that, you make it look much easier to accomplish, but more importantly, you make it much more likely that you'll actually finish your game. I found that I often told myself something's too difficult, because I didn't quite know how to express the fact that I was just overwhelmed by the amount of work. So if you're telling yourself that it's too difficult, you may just be overwhelmed. This happens to me at a similar point in almost every project. I've yet to find a way to skip the stage where you have a mess of interconnected systems that almost seem impossible to fix and your whole project has just become unorganized. No matter how I try to structure things from the start, I wind up here anyways. And I'm sure some of you have experienced it too. I just got past this point in my current project. The scene I was working in had a bunch of test objects, bugs were starting to show up everywhere, and my systems were so tangled together I couldn't add anything new. Unfortunately, it's just a reality that game development will always require iteration. You have to keep revisiting old parts of the project to bring them up to date to match the most recent parts. In my project, I needed to refactor my code, and the problem was, I wasn't thinking like a programmer. I was looking at the game as a whole and telling myself, I need to fix my game, or I just need to refactor all my code. And that's a really overwhelming problem to solve. Thinking like a programmer means that you break the problem down into the smallest parts that you can before trying to solve it. And after you do that, you approach it one piece at a time. I know I keep mentioning programming, but the same logic applies for any part of your game, or really anything you do. In general, don't try to solve large problems, instead break it into small pieces that you can do one at a time. You should also make sure that you have a well-defined problem. If we use my game as an example again, I first define my problem as, my code needs to be refactored. And that's way too broad, so my approach was to grab a pen and some paper and write down every problem I could think of with my code. I wound up writing down a lot of problems, so it made sense that I was overwhelmed trying to solve all of them at once. A lot of them weren't even closely related. I had statements like, the character attack system can only handle one type of melee and ranged attack. The character stat system is difficult to use, and the AI state machine doesn't allow me to make more complex enemy behavior. Now, this is a huge step in the right direction from saying my code is a mess, but these are still big problems, and they weren't well defined. So next I picked one of them to work on, and I started to write down some requirements. For example, if I take the attack system, I determined that every character needs some attack behavior, and a way to determine when the character can attack, and when they do attack. 
At this point, I was able to ask myself some questions like, how can I give different characters different attack behaviors? And each of those questions could then be turned into a task that I could approach. This is also a good time to go back and look at your game design document if you have one. If not, I really recommend creating one that at least describes what you want your game to be by stating what the player's goal is and what they have to do to achieve that goal. From here, you naturally start to think about what kinds of obstacles they face and what actions they can take. And as you come up with those things, you can add them in. Another problem I tend to face when I'm working on a game is that I get bored. And I tend to get bored with projects when I'm not sure what to work on next. I just sit around thinking of something to do, and unfortunately, I get distracted and never come up with something. I can only speak from my experience, but if you're like me, then you may benefit from setting aside some time to plan out tasks for a couple weeks at a time. Set a goal that you want to achieve in that time frame, and list all the tasks that will lead you to that goal. By doing this, you always have something you can work on next. The other reason I tend to get bored working on a game is I've reached the point where I need to start balancing or polishing it. It's a necessary step for any game, but unfortunately it's just not really my favorite part. But I have been reading a book called The Art of Game Design that's given me a much better idea of how I can approach it. I'll put an affiliate link to the book in the description, so if you choose to buy it, you'll be helping out my channel at no extra cost to you. And this is another point where the game design document is useful. If you've been keeping it up to date as you work on your game, it should be a good reference for you to use when you're trying to decide how something should look, feel, or work. Sometimes it seems like the hardest part of game development is getting past the hurdles that we put in our own path, so hopefully I was able to pinpoint some of the thoughts and feelings you have that cause you to abandon projects, and I really encourage you to think more about how it's affecting you specifically. And if it helped, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.